New Brunswick, Texas is home to an event called Worst Fest, which, as its name implies, is a 10-day salute to sausage. I went a few years ago to investigate and learned it's not all sausage. There's also polka dancing, and more relevant for someone who works at a food magazine, there are these amazing potato pancakes that the local Rotary Club makes. They're crispy on the outside and creamy on the inside. To make my own version at home, I'm starting with two pounds of russet potatoes. So russet potatoes are high starch and low moisture. I'm gonna peel and grate these. I really like to use a box grater or a hand grater. It gives you a little more control than something like a food processor, but a food processor with a shredding disc also works really well. This grating step can be done about half an hour in advance. The potatoes will start to turn a little orange or red, but they'll still be as crispy and delicious. To get a really crispy texture, we wanted to get rid of any excess moisture. Even though russets are low moisture, they still have a lot of water in them. So I'm going to squeeze out these potatoes. I'm taking half the batch, and you can just eyeball this, just spreading them in a clean dish towel, rolling it up, and then squeezing. And it's a little messy, but that's OK. In the end, with a crispy pancake, it'll be so well worth it. People might be tempted to not do this step at home, but there's so much moisture that comes out. And that would just make for a really soggy pancake. The pancakes at Versefest were very simple. They were just potato, salt, and onion. And they were so good in their simplicity. I think it allowed the real beauty of their texture to come through. And that's what I'm doing. I'm doing a third of a cup of grated onion. It feels a little strange to grate an onion, but doing it on the same grater allows the texture to like really meld in there and they sort of melt into the pancake in a way. And I'm just gonna add it into the potatoes. I have a few more things to do to finish these pancakes, but before I do that, I'm gonna get the oil heating. I have one and a quarter cups of vegetable oil in this 12 inch skillet. I'm gonna get it to 325 degrees. It's gonna take just a few minutes. So while that finishes heating, I'm gonna finish putting together the rest of my batter. I have two large eggs that are lightly beaten, and this just helps hold everything together when frying. One and a quarter teaspoons of table salt, and then a half cup of all-purpose flour. This mixture is going to feel a little dry. That's a good thing. That's what you want. That's why we squeezed out all that moisture. All right, potatoes are ready to go. Oil's heating, and now it is time to fry. So when I check oil in a shallow fry like this, I always like to tilt the pan to the side so you get a better, easier read on it. I'm looking for 325, and I'm right about there. And I'm just going to keep my skillet over medium heat, but I'll keep an eye on the temperature as I fry and adjust it a little bit as I need. I have a third cup measure here, and I'm just going to add this gently to the oil. So people, when they fry, I think often get really scared, and I get that. You kind of want to do something counterintuitive when you fry and get as close to the oil as you can. You have more control, and you can be as gentle as you want. I'm spraying them with the back of a dinner spoon to about four inches. The ones at Worst Fest were actually like dinner plate size. They were huge, but they are a pain to flip. And I have a few burns to show from it. And now I'm just going to fry until they're golden brown on the first side, which will take three to four minutes. When I fry something like this, I always want as much control as possible. Frying is intimidating, but using two spatulas is really helpful. You can get in there and have maximum control for checking them. So you can kind of peek under them a little bit and see if they're deep golden brown, which is what we're looking for. They kind of look like giant hash browns, and I am very excited about it. Same deal, three to four minutes, and I'm looking for these to be golden brown again on the second side. It's been three minutes, and I'm going to just check the bottom side of these the same way. They are looking so nice and golden brown. And I'm using the two spatulas again for max control, moving them to a paper towel and plate. You do this so it helps wick off any excess grease. And you want to do 15 seconds aside. And after 15 seconds aside, I'm going to throw them on a wire rack. So those are going to hang for a second. I'm going to start another batch. You can see with the batter, it's separated a little bit. There's a lot of water pooling on one side of it. That's really normal. It happens. You just want to make sure to stir it before frying another batch. And then same deal as last time. I'm going to double check the oil. Make sure it's at 325. I'm going to carefully drop in a third of a cup of batter at a time. While this batch finishes frying, I'm going to throw these crispy ones in a low 200 degree oven to keep them nice and warm. And then I'll come back and finish this whole process of frying and warming 
until I have all four batches done. This is the fourth batch, which means it's almost time to eat. As I was frying, I added a little bit of extra oil along the way anytime it got below a quarter of an inch. That just keeps them nice and surrounded by vegetable oil. And back onto the plate to drain. They smell kind of like a french fry in a really nice way. It is almost time to eat, which is the most exciting part. Before I do that though, I always like to season stuff while it's still hot, especially after frying. So I have a little bit of salt and some pepper. I think when things are hot, the salt and pepper stick to them a little better. Down in Texas at Worst Fest, these were called kartoffel poofers. It's the German word for potato pancake. Whatever you want to call them, they are delicious. They also serve them down there with either applesauce or sour cream, or if it's your vibe, you can get them sprinkled with powdered sugar. I'm not super into the sweet thing here, but I think I'll do one of each. It's so crispy, so crunchy, so delicious. They're nice and salty in like a good season kind of way, not in an overly salty way, but in a, like, I want to eat a lot of these and sort of drink a beer alongside them kind of way. A little oniony, but not a lot. While I'm here, I'm eating them with a fork and knife because there's a camera and I don't, you know, want to be a slob, but down at Worst Best, you just eat them with your hands and that's what I'd probably do at home. So crunchy, so good. So if you want to make these crispy kartoffel poofers, it's all about controlling the moisture. So start with russet potatoes and wring out any extra moisture you can get out. From Cook's Country, Texas Potato Pancakes. I think I'm going to go with my hands. Thanks for watching Cook's Country from America's Test Kitchen. So what'd you think? Leave a comment and let us know which recipes you're excited to make or just say hi. Now you can find links to today's recipes and reviews in the video description. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. See you later. Alligator. <laughs>